Hey everyone, Jenner here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Thanks for joining me in today's video. Before we start, take a second to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss our next live stream right here on YouTube every afternoon at 15.30 Eastern Time. Also, don't forget your free morning brief that's waiting for you over at sfftg.com slash brief. That way you can be sure that you're loaded up with all the major levels of interest for the day as well as the morning charts and a few things to get you started on the right foot. Now maybe you're looking to get filled in ahead of time with a video-based game plan every morning, every week, every month. Then you can take a look at the join button below the video to gain access to the SSFTG briefings. And if you want to get into the action, check out the live analysis rooms for the New York Stock Exchange Open. Starting off with a candle by candle perspective on the S&P and realistically it opened up with a big old gap to the upside. Uh, this is what you would consider an outside gap up. The market is gapping higher and it's completely outside of the previous day. Uh, so if we're looking to gauge a little bit of what's going on here, if we zoom way, way, way out, we can see one of the big levels of resistance that was potentially going to hold the market down on the S&P was around this 67s to 70 area. Well, guess what? It gapped all the way above it. So that zone completely just shut down. Uh, every attempt that the sellers had made to try to hold the markets lower was, well, kind of blown out of the water. And we're starting off with a lot of shorts potentially underwater. So it wouldn't be a surprise in the least to see more continuation to the upside because a lot of, a lot of people who are on the wrong side of this are not going to be too happy uh, opening way up here, especially noting that it is closing with a relatively strong bull bar back up. Uh, just looking at the volume profile on the first candle of the day, really the information that it's giving us is kind of showing that there's a lot of balance going on around the 78-75 zone. Uh, so there's a lot of interest around those lows and it seems to have gotten picked up pretty aggressively by the buyers. Uh, now, following into the second candle of the day, <laughs> there's just a, just a little bit of follow through, you know, a big old, big old bull bar to the upside and notably, decreasing volume that's a really good sign the fact that the volume is decreasing down here shows that not many people are interested in taking profit at least not yet uh, and given that they're not really looking to take profit well you would assume that there is still a chance for the market to continue going back to the upside uh, so there's still a reason to believe that buyers will keep trying to go higher and seeing that the buyers are rallying up Looking at zones of resistance that might come into play, there's a nice previous swing higher on the 3690s. Uh, we've got a kind of a weird inside little swing there around the 93s, then up to the 97s. And then we've got more resistance back up towards the 3700, a little bit above that. Um, not, not a big surprise, a big psychological level. Uh, so a lot of things potentially stacking up, but they're still above the market. It's got a little bit of time to keep going to the upside. And it follows through with another nice little bull bar. And not only is it a bull bar to the upside, but it's also candle gapping to the upside, showing that there's a potential to keep going. Uh, so if we're measuring from the bottom of that bull bar to the bottom uh, of the next bull bar, and we look at a move that is an equal one-to-one -one drive to the upside, that would create an upside target for the buyers at around 36.93 quarter. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the market has to go there, but that is the current upside objective that it's going to be looking for. And buyers showing up this aggressively with three bull bars back to back to back, it's going to find some interest for potential continuation. Buyers are basically just looking for anything they can get their hands on. There's no volume with new highs suggesting that, well, nobody's taking profit yet. Uh, so the best that the sellers can hope for is that it goes down into maybe a short term range. That's about it. Uh, buyers are going to be looking to pick up basically everything. We get a dip below the previous bull bar and buyers picked it up. What a surprise. Now, interestingly, we didn't see increasing volume. Volume actually kind of decreased a little bit. It balanced out. That's not what you want to see if this were buyers taking over. Now, this does still have open uh, open candle gapping, but it did fill a bit of that in. Uh, looking for candle gap objectives now, that would put the high objective right about there. Uh, at around 36.90.75. It's still open, uh, but we're not really seeing a whole lot of anything. Buyers probably bought below the lows, realistically, on that previous bull bar uh, to this engulfing bear bar. 
Uh, but the fact that it went engulfing might have shaken the nerves a little bit of some traders. So maybe sitting on hands. We have a doji. That's about the definition of sitting on hands. Nothing happened. <laughs> Everybody just, well, they just sat there and watched. Like, hey, uh, okay, I need more info. And then it gave nobody anything. There's nothing really to work with here. It's a completely balanced doji. I think it's got maybe one extra tick on the top than it does on the bottom. But that's about it. Uh, it's not really showing anything. There's no increasing volume. There's nothing. Uh, we get another bull bar back up. Now, notably, the volume is decreasing and price is finally going up. And this is another inside bar. Uh, so we've got this big outside bar and then we've got an inside bar and another inside bar. These two are basically equal size, except it's got one tick higher low. Uh, whenever you have a double inside bar like that, generally speaking, that would be considered kind of a flag before a breakout, right? You've got the flag formation. It's creating a nice base. Could be a pennant, any number of ways that you want to look at it. But buyers will be looking for a breakout continuation. And we still have those upside objectives that are hanging out at 90.75, still waiting to get tested. Uh, so bulls will be looking for a continuation to the upside to see if they can kind of finish that off. Nice increase in price. And now we finally see an increase in volume. It appears as though the buyers are finally starting to take a little bit of profit, but we haven't hit the major candle gap area yet. So it's still kind of okay. I mean, we can see that there's some profit taking going on with the increase in volume. Still closing nice strong bull bars. Buyers are still very likely in. I don't really have a reason to do anything yet until they hit the objective, uh, which is still a couple ticks up. Now we hit a roadblock. <laughs> we hit the major level of resistance. And notice this candle's not very big, but the volume increased. That's a surefire way to tell that there was some profit taking that happened. And the fact that it hit it right to the tick where you expect it to hit, I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with that. Now, I'm not a big fan of shorting this area, especially not with a big gap up. Uh, and, and all of that. Seeing some profit taking though would make sense that buyers are letting off the gas pedal. Uh, we're still probably going to see a bit more continuation to the upside, but now we're starting to run into those previous swing highs that the 89 halves. There's some things of interest that are causing some problems and seeing volume increasing on these new highs makes it even harder. Uh, so it's likely that buyers might still try to come in, but they're not going to want to buy too high. They're going to be buying below candles, buying at the previous zone of support around those 86 quarters, uh, just buying a little bit lower to see if they can rotate it back up to the highs again. We get a pullback, a weak bear bar doesn't really do much. Now, this is a little bit of a concern because prices went down and volume didn't increase. And that would suggest kind of what we were talking about. Buyers aren't necessarily looking for this to continue much further. They're probably, if anything, just looking for it to retest the highs. Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet, obviously, but that's kind of what it's looking like right now. It just doesn't look like it's that strong. And seeing a lack of volume on a pullback, that's, e that's creating even more of an issue. Now, we're not really showing buyers wanting to continue the drive. We get weakness and a new high and no increase in volume, not really much of a candle. It didn't make a new high. It kind of fell flat on its face. It really didn't do a whole lot. Uh, it tried breaking above the highs and it, it, ugh, it just didn't do much. I think a lot of traders will be waiting to see like, okay, well, maybe this is just a range, not giving me any proof, nothing to really work with yet. Any shorts who shorted below the bear bar on the highs, although it's not favorable, uh, they will potentially be sitting a bit underwater now, uh, or at least right around that break-even point. If they're shorting underneath that bear bar, then they're hovering right at that break-even point where they might be getting a bit nervous, thinking, you know, oh man, maybe I don't want to be short here. Uh, and if it does pull back, you might see those sellers get out of break-even. That might also be sellers trying to get a second sell off the top. But, you know, again, realistically, where things are, what the volume is telling us, we're probably just going to go sideways, if anything. Another bull bar back to the upside. Now, this is a good sign. It went underneath the previous bull bar and found some support and closed up. And it did have an increase in volume. So that would suggest that buyers are still buying the pullback. They're a little bit on the shy side. They're not coming in with huge volume, but they are obviously buying it. Uh, so we need just a bit more info, but it does look like buyers will probably get a breakout move back to the highs, retest that candle gap area. That's where things are going to have to wait and see, because if we can get above that, then all systems are go to the 3700s. But if they have a hard time around this candle gap area again, I'm not so sure buyers are going to want to hang out anymore. Good continuation, weak new highs, hasn't really broken even above the previous bull bar. 
uh, reduced volume, not really seeing a whole lot of anything happening here. It's not proving much. Uh, just trying to get a bit more continuation. It's not going to shake the confidence of buyers, uh, and it might have allowed the sellers to get out of break even. Right? You can see where the wick took place. Uh, their short entries were underneath the bear bar, and well, lo and behold, that's where it found some support. It's almost like those sellers got out of break even. So it does look like buyers are trying to get a continuation back to the highs. It's just not really doing much. It seems like volume's kind of falling flat on its face a bit. Now we're getting kind of an ascending wedge-ish, maybe a spike in channel. A little bit gross up here. Got to wait and see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, big, big engulfing bear bar all the way back down. And <laughs> this that's rough, right? Because we saw a big increase in volume and that's after it made a one tick new high. So all of the buyers got their objective. They got the highs, right? And if their target was the high of day, the market went through it by a tick, which ensures that they were actually filled. So seeing all of that volume coming in and then seeing the market immediately reverse right back down with a humongous bear bar on its low, that's going to shake the confidence of pretty much any long who is still in the market. And it's very likely that we start seeing these buyers giving up a bit. Uh, because realistically, if the buyers were strong and we we're going to continue this rally up, then where are they? Right? We should we should have seen that continuation. It's not happening. Right? We're, we're getting kind of this gross ascending wedge that's trying to break lower. That's not a good sign. Uh, so this is going to shake the confidence a little bit and it really, really has to be seen what happens next underneath this bear bar, because we're probably, if it starts triggering in shorts, going back to the moving average. That's the next likely area that the market's going to want to go back to revert to the mean. We get more continuation of the downside and here's the uh oh moment for buyers. This is the lowest volume the market has seen the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> so since the beginning of the day, that's the lowest volume. And that's after we put in a huge potential top and a big bear bar. Nobody is stepping up to the plate to defend against this bear move down. And we can see that reflected in the volume. It's probably going to keep going lower, gunning for the moving average, maybe just to fill in some of that gap. Whatever the case may be, we hit some major objectives up here and the market is not interested in going higher, at least not yet. More pullback and now we're starting to see some volume increase, right? We went from the lowest volume to a big jump in volume, which would potentially suggest that we've got some buyers trying to come in on this pullback. Uh, we can further kind of clarify what's going on here if we get the profile on. You can see a lot of that volume came in right there at 83.75. Now, if we go backward and we see, well, wait a minute, why is 83.75 such an important level? Like, what, what, what happened there? Oh, bear engulfing candle. That was that bear engulfing entry point from earlier uh, that the sellers potentially got stuck on. We're back. Seems like they're getting out of break even so far, right? We got a big chunk of volume all at that specific spot. That seems a little bit convenient, don't you think? So this seems like maybe sellers who were stuck earlier on the fourth candle of the day are trying to come out of break even. Uh, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to put a cork in it. Given the context that we've seen in that really low volume shift, this might just be a chance for the buyers who got stuck at the highs to get out, but we got to see a little bit more info. Oh man, okay, giant bear bar to the downside. And now we're back to the moving average. It's not quite to a new low of day, but that shut down the entire candle gap. And this is one of the biggest bars of the entire day, if not the biggest bar. Uh, and it, although it is one of the largest bars, it's not the largest volume that still has to go to the, the stock exchange open candle. Uh, but with a big increase in volume, that would show that buyers are potentially coming in. In this case, though, given the way that it's moving, it's more likely shorts taking profit, right? That's at least based on the context that we've seen so far. If we project this forward, a lot of that volume is coming in down at the moving average. What a shock, right? Who would have thought we we're going to get a bunch of volume right around the moving average? Uh, so it's more profit taking. This isn't new buyers coming in necessarily, uh, but it's sellers 
getting out, right? It's sellers taking some profit, just playing it a little bit safe. It might be new buyers, but we don't have that proof yet because we haven't had a higher high, higher low, nothing like that. Uh, we're just back at the moving average. Uh, we're also getting into a really awkward time of day going into 1050, lunchtime around the corner, etc. cetera. Uh, so that definitely creates a little bit of an awkward scenario. And as we go into the rest of the morning, you can see that that ended up just being a big bull trap and the market ended up cycling uh, lower for the rest of the afternoon session. So really good clue in terms of seeing what's going on with the volume in correlation with what price is doing. Uh, when you start building a story and you start basing it around volume, you can really gather uh, kind of a, a way to see the evidence. The, the proof is in the pudding, if you will, right? Uh, that's where you can see all of the volume coming in to support your thesis. And if you're right, that's when you can set up those really nice high probability trades and try to allow them to work out in your favor for some of those bigger runs. And that's where even though they're not risking a whole lot, these shorts off the highs only have to risk above the top, but that thing easily went five, six, seven to one all the way to the downside just based on that candle on the highs. So keep that in mind when you're trying to pick these reversals or when you're trying to pick the high or anything like that, don't assume that it's gonna be high probability because there's always a trade-off that high probability well, it comes on the fact that you're giving it a lot of risk. In this case, these traders are not giving it a lot of risk. They're giving it purely off of the technicals. And if they're right, the market's going to pay them. And if they're wrong, they're out a couple ticks. Not a big deal. It's a way to compensate for that probability. Great way to look at the correlation between volume and price, though, and definitely something to potentially add to your tool belt. Hopefully you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to shoot me an email, jhb at sssftg.com. Until the next one, we will see you all. Uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.